Welcome to World History. Today we're going to be learning about the Greek world. This is going to be just a brief overview of ancient Greece because hopefully you already have some understanding of it and have studied it in other classes. Greek culture emerged on the Greek peninsula and Greek society was organized into a series of competing city-states as we can see on this map here. These cities competed with each other, went and established colonies in other places as we can see here in Ionia and organized themselves around a central hill in the middle of the city, usually known as the Acropolis. These cities would then attempt to uh, expand their culture and compete with each other to become the dominant city in the region. And because the Greeks traveled so widely across the Mediterranean Sea, Greek culture spread and influenced the development of lots of other societies. Probably the most long-lasting effect of Greek culture is the idea of citizenship. A citizen is uh, someone who can participate in government, and it's different than a subject of a king. In a, to be a citizen, it means that you have both responsibilities and privileges within a society. For example, in, in Athens, one of the Greek city-states, citizens could vote to help choose their leaders, but also had to serve in the army. Citizenship in Athens was limited to male people who were men, who were born free, and who were descended from Athenian parents. But other Greek cities had some other visions of citizenship. And throughout the course of this class, we're going to be discussing many different visions of both what it means to be a citizen and who is included in the roles of citizenship. The Greek city-states were often at war with each other, and one of the responsibilities of a Greek citizen was to fight in defense of their city. These Greek citizen soldiers were known as hoplites, and in general, they would fight with a sword, and, with, with a spear and a shield in a formation known as a phalanx. In a Greek phalanx, Greek warriors would stand in close formation using the shield to help protect themselves and the person next to them while stabbing with a spear. This formation was incredibly important because, of course, these Greek hoplites were not full-time professional soldiers for the most part, and so the fighting style needed to be one that someone without a ton of experience could pick up. The effectiveness of this Greek military strategy was most famously illustrated in the Persian War, when the massive Persian Empire, shown on this map here, attempted to attack and overwhelm the city-states of Athens and Sparta. The Athenians and Spartans were able to fight off and eventually defeat the massive Persian Empire, giving us, of course, the famous Battle of Thermopylae, where 300 Spartans were able to delay the Greek or the Persian army, and the famous Battle of Marathon. After the Battle of Marathon, a runner ran 26.2 miles back to Athens to report on the Greeks' victory, and of course, and this is the origin of the marathons that we run today. Greek society began to collapse when these larger Greek city-states went to war against each other. The Peloponnesian War was a war between Athens and Sparta that was eventually won by the Spartans, which really led to the decline of the Greek age. With Sparta in control, the Greeks became more focused on themselves and Greek society would eventually collapse as they were conquered by a variety of different empires, and Greece really never rose to prominence again. So, if the Greeks never rose to prominence again, why are we still talking about them, and why is it worth dedicating a day in class to studying them? Greek ideas are still with us today. One of the most important ideas we get from the ancient Greeks is Greek philosophy and the idea of the Socratic process. The Socratic process is a way of trying to understand our world better through asking questions and trying to question people's viewpoints and to develop better understandings. Socrates is known as the father of Greek philosophy because he created this process. And then his disciples, Plato and later Aristotle, refined these ideas. And you'll be working with some of these philosophies in your readings for today. So Greek philosophy and challenging ideas about the world are one of the takeaways we get from the ancient Greeks. But Greek culture is almost more important. 
the Greeks gave us the pantheon of gods that we sort of know today that are very important in even modern literature. This idea of a series of feuding gods uh, really defines the way that we understand almost all polytheistic or multi-god religions. And even when we talk about sort of religions that are very different from Greek religion, we tend to think of them in terms of Greek religion, because that's what we're most familiar with. You have all of these various gods, each of whom has power over, you know, something. With Zeus throwing thunderbolts and uh, Ares being the god of war and mighty Poseidon presiding over the oceans. The Greeks also gave us the Olympics and our ideas of athletic competitions. They gave us theater, and the Greeks gave us history in a very real sense. The Greeks were the first ones to tell history as a narrative or a story, very similar to the way that we deal with history today. So rather than simply writing down what happened, providing color and uh, more detail to our history books is one of the legacies of the ancient Greeks. So despite the fact that the ancient Greeks did not have a long life on the world stage, they have an outsized effect on many aspects of modern society. And so it's important to be at least somewhat familiar with the accomplishments of the ancient Greeks.